What's My Line? Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a very delightful gentleman indeed, who, with his three glorious confreres, has just completed the 300th performance of the comedy hit, Beyond the Fringe, Mr. Peter Cook. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce the celebrated crime reporter, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> It's my pleasure to introduce the president of Random House, Mr. Bennett Tierce. And here's our distinguished panel moderator, a man with a superb physique. In fact, he has one of the largest vocabularies extant, Mr. John Charles Daly. <laughs> Peter Cook, it's nice to see you on the panel. Matter of fact, uh, I think we're going to give you a good half hour. We have some fun here for you. Arlene and I are going to be uh, a little proud in Peacock tonight. We're going to be at Miss Universe next Saturday and just think of the rest of you folks. So we'll try to be kind. You're going to, well, you're going to be Mrs. Universe or Miss Universe, I don't know which, on Saturday. But we do have some uh, fun, I think, tonight in hand for you, and we'll also have a famous mystery guest before our panel a little bit later in the program. We'll meet our first challenger after this one. And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Carolyn... Doggerty, is that right? Is it uh, Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Doherty. And where are you from, ma'am? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia? City of brotherly love. It's nice to have you with us. Miss Doherty, may I present our panel? Now, will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, I'm All right, fine. Then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. panel, we can tell you that Miss Dougherty is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. Miss Dougherty, am I correct in surmising that there's a bit of Irish in you somewhere or other? Yeah. Uh, would it, it's an inconceivable to me that a girl as lovely as you wouldn't have something to do with the field of entertainment. Have you? No. No? What a one way. down, nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes, I do. Do you work indoors? Sometimes. You move around in your work? Yes. You personally move around? Yes. Um, is there anything um, athletic at all in what you do? No. Nope. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Cook. Miss Donnelly, when I... If I was to come to you for your service, would I be more likely to catch you inside or outside? Or um, <laughs> would I follow you around as you move from uh, one part to the other? Well, now, we, that's two questions, Peter. You it is. To... I realize there's no answer to it. I'm just <laughs> biding my time. <laughs> and, uh, I was thinking of going to the diplomatic service before I did this. Um, would I find you inside? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when you had uh, rendered this service, would I um, 
have benefited um, in an intellectual capacity, would I have learned something about something from you? Well, I would say here this would much depend on your relationship to Miss Doggerty at the time that the service was conveyed. Uh, under one circumstance, we would agree that uh, you might learn something, right? Yes. Under another, we might uh, agree that you still had learned something, but uh, might not necessarily seek the information. I see. I might as be about as puzzled as I am now, in fact. <laughs> um, would, um, in your outside capacity, um, do you work at all with animals? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could I use your services, too? Yes. Do you work uh, with your hands? You mean specifically to the exclusion of, uh... Oh, I don't want to exclude anything. <laughs> well, to the exclusion of the normal experience of, do you work, I mean, we wouldn't say you worked with your hands as a specific fact, but you do use your hands in your work. How yes, do you I, mean... I type. Yeah. Well, well, now, do you mean, does Miss Doggerty ever use her hands, or does she principally use her hands? Ever. Ever. Well, I guess you're in pretty safe ground now. <laughs> uh, do you, when you move from indoors to outdoors, move for a reason rather than just the fact that you like it outdoors more than indoors? Yes. Yeah. Uh, is it because there are people out there who want your service? No. Well, here again, with your permission, Miss Dargerty, I would say that people are involved, that if Miss Dargerty went outside, it would probably have something to do with people. It would be something with, I mean, it would take her from one place to another. That's fair, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do people pay you directly rather than charging it? No. <laughs> They Four down. No, they don't. And actually, remember, Miss Dougherty works for a profit-making organization. This has been, I think, developed and deals in a service. Mr. Sir? Miss Dougherty, yes. do you require any special training for the service that you perform? Yes. Uh, is it a certain kind of uh, schooling that you need? You mean leading to a degree or having the Not character? Not necessarily having a degree, but uh, some kind of training in, in some kind of course that enables you to do the work that you are now doing. Yes. Uh, do you wear any kind of special uniform for the work that you do? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. I have a feeling we're getting no place. You uh, are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting no place. Um, do you ever take anybody outside that has been inside with you? <laughs> no. You don't no, take I them out? Sometimes. It's possible that in the, in the conveyance of the service, Miss Dougherty might have occasion to take somebody outside who was inside. Yes. Yeah. Would, you, uh, would you ever work with people that were not quite well? <laughs> oh, none of us are, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, not specifically, and the fact of their, of their health or lack Is of it of would no not be germane. No, that's six down and four. I'm going to give you one more minute because you're wandering afield. Do you think us asking you the whole time whether you go in or out is any help to us at all? No, that's absolutely right. No, that's seven <laughs> down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you work in or near a building that has any significance other than an office building? In other words, if we knew what kind of a building you worked in or near, would we have a clue to your profession? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, no. Okay. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Dowdy, does your service... Are you, we never did establish the fact that whether or not you work for a profit-making organization. Yes, 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 that was yes. The yes. Does your service have anything to do with food or drink? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. You want a bouncer? No. No, but you're getting at least close. That's ten down a and no man. more to go. How about a private detective? Oh! Ah. Miss Dougherty is with the Ross Bureau of Investigation in Philadelphia, uh, and a license, their license, Miss Dougherty works for them as a uh -huh. corporation, does most of her work actually as a store detective. So that uh, I felt there was a possibility one member of the panel might come into contact with Miss Dougherty. <laughs> uh, I thought I saw her the other day rushing in and out of a store. Most uh, unintrusively. But for no specific purpose. No specific no purpose. No specific purpose. Ms. Dargany, thank you very much. Nice to have you with us in What's My Life.
All right, now to meet our second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Herb <coughs> Jenks, right, sir? Right. And where are you from, Mr. Jenks? Costa Mesa, California. And Costa Mesa is near? South of Los Angeles. South of Los Angeles, right. down around San Diego oh, in that Newport. area. Down Newport area? Right. Well, got some friends in San Diego here. I thought maybe you might be neighbors. Not quite. Well, may I present our panel? How do you do? All right, Mr. Jenks, will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, sir. Good show. Then we'll let the folks at home and the folks in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, Mr. Jenks, the salary deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene French. Is it a product one would buy in a store? Yes. Uh, would you ever buy it as a gift for someone? Yes. You would, but I think with Mr. Jenks' permission, it would be uh, an unusual gift, and the circumstances of its purchase as a gift would perhaps be less numerous than you would anticipate. Uh -huh. Would it be, if one had one, wouldn't you keep it in a special room of the house? I presume so. Oh. Uh, would it be more likely to be kept in uh, a kitchen area? <laughs> no. no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Cook. Would I be able to carry it? Oh, yes. Is it uh, larger than my fist? Yes. Is it something which, uh, when I received it as a surprise, because it's not usually given as a gift, would it um, arrive in a cardboard box? Yes. <laughs> I sound very knowing. It's no help to me at all. <laughs> I've never had anything arrive in a cardboard box in Hong Kong. <laughs> uh, would I be right in assuming that you can't eat this? Right. Are you sure I wouldn't try? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're sure you wouldn't try. Um, would you be pleased to get one of these? No. <laughs> It isn't really fair, Peter, to give you a no, but you asked the question. <laughs> Mr. Jenks really would be pleased if he got one. He likes something else. Miss Gilgal. Then is this a necessity rather than a luxury? No. No, I would say here that we would have to agree that while it is necessary to the particular function that is performed, it certainly isn't to be considered a necessity in the average American home. Mr. Sir? Mr. Jenks, might this object be bought in an ordinary sort of store? What is an ordinary sort of store? Then? Well, a department <laughs> store, or a store where they sell uh, garden machinery or tools or things of that sort. Uh, no. no. That's no? four out and six to go, Miss Francis. If Mr. Jenks would not like to receive one of these, is it because it is something that a woman should have instead of a man? <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Mr. Cook. Nobody ought to have one. <laughs> <laughs> no, all we can... Mr. Jenks. Uh, Mr. And, uh, Mr. Jenks just is purely subjective when he says he wouldn't be particularly pleased. After all, he's got, he's got one already. Let's face it, Mr. Cook. Uh, <laughs> do you get given several for Christmas? I mean, uh, do you... Um, advertise this product, not yourself, but is this product heavily advertised? Or is it assumed to be something everybody ought to have, even though it's not a necessity? <laughs> no. <laughs> Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this solid rather than liquid? Rather than what? Liquid. Yes, yes. Is this something that has to be used in conjunction with something else to function properly? Hmm. Well, it has to be used, I think we can agree, in conjunction with something else to be used with any real meaning, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, in other words, if I had one, it wouldn't be just lying around on the coffee table. <laughs> I think that is a fair statement. It would not be just lying around on the coffee table. Well, is it, in fact, rather an ugly thing? Oh, no. Oh, no. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Seth. Mr. Jenks, is there any element of danger in this product? In the product itself? Or in the use of say? Uh, very rare. Hmm? Yeah, I would think Mr. Jenks is being very fair. We can't give you a no, Bennett, because I think it's improperly used, as with almost anything else. It could have elements of danger, but properly used, we'd say no. Might this product be used in any kind of sport or entertainment? 
Yes. Would that be a, a really function of it? Yes. Uh, would it be used in some sport? Yes. Would it be used in an outdoor sport? Yes, sir. Would it be used in a sport that is uh, performed on land? Yes. Would it be a sport which teams play? Yes. Uh, might it be either baseball or football? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I thought you had it. Um, is it uh, an accessory for the sport? You must have one in order to play whatever this game is. Well, you, have, you must have one to participate to in participate the pattern in the sport. of sports to which your team and, your, and yourself are uh, dedicating yourself. Uh -huh. is, it a, uh, is it a sport uh, in which animals uh, also are interested? Is it an American sport rather than uh, an English one? No, I don't think we can call it an American sport. No, no, no. no. I don't understand why you couldn't no. get this. Boomerangs, here. tennis. Boomerangs? No, no. It's a Archery. simple thing. You have them on the coffee table all the time. Pole, <laughs> poles for pole vaulting. <laughs> That's, a, that's not a team sport. Sure it is. Oh, sure it is. You're on a track team when you go out and, and uh, play. You, a, do you have some beautiful... Are these new he makes oh, new fiberglass. 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 With that's the developer the and manufacturer <laughs> of the fiberglass pole. Is that, that's what enables these is. boys to break the records. Yeah, yeah. Right. Browning... Break right. Right. every day. Browning Silaflex. Yeah. Well, oh. we're up to now, almost Silo 18 feet, aren't they, yeah. Mr. Jackson? Browning Silo Flex. Pardon? Almost up to 18 feet, aren't they? No, almost no. 17. No. 16, 8 and 16, 3 quarters three yesterday quarters. in London, so it's yeah. not only John there. Pennell <laughs> yesterday in London, 16, 8 and 3 quarters feet, and using one of the new uh, uh, Silo Flex, or should I get Browning Silo Flex uh, poles, right? We call it a sky pole, John. That, that doesn't mean that the old athletes weren't as good. They didn't have the equipment that you fellows give them now. <laughs> Isn't that correct? Well, uh... By learning more techniques, I think it's more difficult on a glass pole. They can improve. As an example, Ron Morris uh, held the records on the aluminum pole, and he is now using the fiberglass pole, and he is one of the boys uh, who is over in Europe at the present time. Got second place in the AAU meet recently. I'm so sure they... I've seen some advertising for this uh, appalling Brand X pole, which breaks under you, whereas the <laughs> fiberglass one carries you. Well, it wasn't paid for. <laughs> Ah, well, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jake, thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun. Hope you, you enjoyed John. your visit with us. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance. Appearance, pardon me, the appearance of our the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all know, my friends in the panel, are blindfolded. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, panel, in this case, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you a movie star? Yeah. Mr. Sir? Are you of the masculine persuasion? Yeah. <laughs> Miss Francis? It sounds dubious. Will you... Uh, are you appearing in a, uh, a picture now being made in New York? No! One down and nine to go, Mr. Cook. Are you a comedy performer primarily? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Oh, uh, have you ever been on this panel? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Surf. Have you been within the past season in the Broadway play? Yes. Miss Francis? Are you at the present time in a Broadway play? Yes. Mr. Cook? Are you Paul Ford?
Well, I must say, Peter, I thought we had you running. How did you do that? Oh, I saw the play, and I'd recognize that voice anywhere. You would? Uh, well, I must say, I guess there are very few of us from uh, Maine to Florida and from Massachusetts to California who would have too much difficulty recognizing that voice. I am, might as well lay it on the table, Colonel, uh, an old Bilko fan from way back. Oh, thank you. An old Bilko fan from way back. And I must say, but I changed my voice. Well, I, you, I think you... It's rather tough. Yeah, it's tough. But no. you, you... I thought Peter Cook would be the last one to get it. Well, I'm I sure thought... He wouldn't get it. I was well, worried about... Uh, I was worried more about Arlene and Dorothy and Bennett than I was Peter. But, yeah. But, uh, well, we were on the track, but... Uh, good ear, you know. Yeah, Peter's uh, got a good ear. And that... Uh, because even when you're up high, I can see it was there. Yeah, and that, that was, was an E flat, you know, a high E flat. Was that a high yeah. E flat? Well, for heaven's sake. I think we ought to say something about the play yeah. that Mr. Ford is so glorious oh, in. So. At the Playhouse Theater at Broadway, never too late. And never it's, too it's late. It's an yes, absolute indeed. delight. But then everything, I think, and, I'm, and I hope... you seen it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of them have, and a lot more will. But I don't, Paul, I trust that this is not out, out of place, but... He has one of those rare and wonderful comedic personalities that just, I just watch him stand there and not say a word, and I start to giggle. Funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's all right. <laughs> Paul, may I thank you for, I know you, you, doing a regular show is hard work, and it's nice of you to give us a Sunday night, and it's a joy and an honor to have had you on What's well, My Life. a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> In balance, I guess we'll have to say you didn't do too badly so far tonight, panel, and we'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. And on that note, may I say, ah, good night, Miss Eileen Francis. See you during the week, John, and it's all right, Sir Jim. I'll see you too. <laughs> good night, Peter, and I hope the establishment is a big success in San Francisco in August when you open there. Thank you very much. Good night, Dorothy, and I hope you have a great time in London. Thank you very much, Peter. Good night, Senator. John, on behalf of your wife and myself, may I ask you to please behave yourself at that beauty contest in Florida next week. <laughs> Arlene's my chaperone. What more could anybody ask, I would say? It's going to be fun. And I, I think if you haven't met uh, uh, that wonderful young lady, Norma Beatrice Nolan, who is the current Miss Universe, you've missed something, because she really is, in every sense of the word, a fine young lady, yes. and it's going he to be a journey. Brazil last year, wasn't Argentina. It? Argentina. Miss Argentina, yeah. Didn't Miss England sprain her ankle? <laughs> oh, I read that. You well, actually, I'm not sure. I, re I read that. You mean this current, in the current term? This current one, she, while she was warming up, she sprained her ankle. It's going to be an un <laughs> a bit untidy with that cast, isn't it? Well, we, we still we hope, hope for the best. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Life? What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Johnny Olsen speaking.